He joins us each week, courtesy of MyBookie.ag. Code next round at MyBookie.ag. I recognize this. It's the Charlotte Airport. That's where Harp is. <laughs> He's on a flight to Gainesville. That's where you guys are this weekend, right? That is correct. It uh, should be fun. I mean, it's going to be hot. Oh, but yeah. It still should be fun. Yeah, it's going to be hot. That's for dang sure down there. What a fascinating game that is, though. Um, the more and more this summer has dragged along, the more and more I've talked myself into Florida pulling, uh, what is a small point <laughs> spread upset, but this this is realistically a toss-up game. I've talked myself yes. into Florida in this game, Harp. Yeah, I, I totally understand why. I get it. Um, look, I, I was fairly confident about Miami too, right? Everything we thought about Florida, just what they were last year, what they're bringing back, all the missing, all the questionable pieces, uh, the lack of success as far as like starting off the season hot for Florida the last couple of years under Billy Napier. All these things are out there. And uh, I talked to my man, John Vilma, and he doesn't give me enough confidence to feel better about Miami right now, guys. So I, I think you may be onto something. Wow. So uh, last year, and this is hard to remember, Harp, because it's forever ago, when we were in Nashville for SEC Media Days 2023, the media, you know, there was there was a lot going around on, and then we had 14 teams on the worst quarterback yeah. in the SEC coming into the year, and a lot of people had Graham Mertz. And Graham Mertz, although it was not a successful season overall for Florida, he was really good last year. And I think a lot of people forget he was an Elite 11 quarterback. He was, at one point, the highest recruit ever signed at Wisconsin, and it just didn't work out there. Are we maybe just sleeping that Graham Mertz is a pretty good quarterback? No, I think he's efficient and effective. So when you know who you are as a quarterback, which I, I feel like he's learned who he is, you can be more effective. You're not going to try and do to put the ball, put the ball in harm's way sometimes when you don't have to force it. When you know you can take the check down and you know that you can do these little things and play sufficient and effective quarterback play, like that's all it is most of the time. Is especially when you have a coach that knows who you are. That's what Nick Saban used to always talk about. I was like. Look, I'd rather have a quarterback who, know, who I know what I'm going to get out of instead of the one who I don't know. And sometimes you don't always have to make the Hall of Fame play. I just need you to make the regular plays all the time. I thought Graham did a great job of that, especially with what I saw him do in Wisconsin. So I saw his growth and what he was able to do last year. I, I thought it was outstanding, actually. But, you know, they still got to have somebody that can stop somebody on the other side of the football. You still got to be able to play complimentary football at the University of Florida, which is, to me, that's the real key missing ingredient is that they haven't played together as a team. When the defense plays decent, the offense is off. When the offense is off, the defense plays decent. So you got to be able to play in all of, uh, you know, in all aspects, all three aspects of the game. Um, around the SEC, uh, new member Texas, national championship contender, if I asked you, do you need more questions answered offensively or defensively by this Texas Longhorn team? Because they're replacing some key parts on both sides of the ball. Yeah, I, I just think overall as a team, I, look, so I, I think defensively, to answer your question specifically, and that's because they lost the two big boys up front. You don't get to just replace NFL talent, size, and ability up front and between the D tackles the way that you did at Texas last year. Like, they just don't build guys like that on trees. I'm sorry. Uh, they can be good on the edge, but as far as stout, running the football up the middle, that's what, that's what allowed Texas defense to be so good last year was that they didn't allow people to do that. And so that's what I would say to answer your question. Me specifically, just to kind of add on to that, is that Texas has three games to me. I don't really care about what they have to replace, what it's going to – because nobody cares, right? Injuries, their loss to the running back, that hurts. But everybody has injuries in football. That's just part of the game. It's cooked into business. But they have three games, all right? Michigan, and I assume that they will beat Michigan because Michigan is not the same team. And Texas brings back way more than that. But you got to beat Oklahoma. Like, you've lost eight out of the last ten. And we're always used to Texas supposed to be this. Or, like, you got to beat Oklahoma. All right? Then I can start taking you seriously. And then after that, you got old, you got Georgia at home. That's going to be a huge barometer of who we really think this team is supposed to be, uh, whether they win it or not, but how do they look. And then, of course, at the end of the year, you got Texas A&M on the road at Kyle Field. And if you can't, like, Kyle Field's going to be ready. I just know that. And so you got to win these games because Texas – traditionally has found a way to lose a game that they're not supposed to. That's why we can't say Texas is back. Roman Harper is with us, SEC Network, on his way to Gainesville. He joins us each week courtesy of mybookie.ag, code next round. They will double your initial deposit with code next round at mybookie.ag. Bet anything, anytime, anywhere with mybookie.ag. We have talked all this offseason 
about the fact that Mike Elko knows Riley Leonard, the Notre Dame quarterback. He played for him, so he, yeah. knows, he knows how to frustrate him. He knows the looks that uh, Riley Leonard does not like. On the other side of that, Marcus Freeman faced Mike Elko when Freeman and Notre Dame played Duke. How much of that can you carry over when all the personnel is different, Harp? I mean, how much? I, 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 I mean, you want to know, like, personalities, right? Yeah. Like, so I can take that from it. Now, the uniform, the, the strategic pieces, like, those all can change because who you're facing will determine what our strategy will be. Um, but you do know personalities. Like, every head coach has a personality. You know, Jim Harbaugh, he's going to make an aggressive play call in big games. He's going to have a flea flicker. He's going to have – a reverse pass. Like, these personalities start to show. Sean Payton, he's going to have an aggressive mentality. Like, Ron Rivera, he's going to be more conservative. He's going to punt the ball. So, like, personalities can transition and carry over. But as far as this game, if this game goes exactly like how you described it, this will be in the benefit of Texas A&M. When I look at Notre Dame and what their roster has been constructed with under Marcus Freeman for three years now, their roster overall is better than what Texas A&M's is in Mike Elko's year one. I know Jim Bowden lived the cupboard empty, but just overall, it's still, I think Notre Dame's roster overall is better. And so if you make this game about Riley Leonard versus Mike Elko, Mike Elko wins that battle. Mike Elko will win that game. And so Notre Dame has to be a complete team. You got to understand you're on the road. You're going to have to face Kyle Field. You're going to have a lot of different factors into it. You got to be good. You got to run the football. A punt's not a bad thing this week, and you got to take care of it, and you got to hopefully force a turnover or two. You do that, you win the game. But it's going to be a tough road game for Notre Dame. Uh, I don't know who I'm picking right now, but I am leaning a certain way. Yeah, to me, there's three fascinating, <laughs> three fascinating games out there, Harp, and one of them is Sunday night in Vegas, LSU, USC. I mean, both yeah. of these coaches. There is so much pressure when they took the jobs. A lot of people were like, well, Brian Kelly is going to win a national championship. Lincoln Riley is going to win a national championship. <laughs> and they haven't even come close. And, you know, I mean, obviously being in the Big Ten and the SEC, you need to win this out-of-conference game if you want to really be in play come November rolling into December. Um, I, I don't even – I've, I've talked myself into believing that Miller Moss is going to be really good, but I don't think the defense is going to be that much better. I mean, how do you see this one playing out? Uh, it's really uh, – it's going to go right down to what you said. Which defense actually shows up? Like I, like Blake Baker is supposed to have LSU better. Uh, but, uh, you know, they should be better schematically. Um, but we're going to see, right? They still have to improve. You don't get to just draft a whole new defensive player. So that's going to have to kind of work itself out. And Lincoln Riley has never had a team that plays defense. So whoever plays defense wins that game. I, I don't really know who that would be. It will be interesting to see. Sorry, it'll be okay. interesting to see what LSU looks like offensively. And I don't even know the Miller Moss kid. So I'll let you take that bet. <laughs> hey, anytime, anytime somebody actually hits the wrong button when we do it, when we do these things, I'm just always happy if it's just a black screen that says iPhone. I'm just always happy <laughs> if it's not something else, man. We've been doing this for four years now, and I'm always fearful that it's going to be something else. So I'm happy. I'm happy. I uh, love seeing uh, Roman's iPhone pop up there. Uh, so here we go. Uh, my question is, Georgia, um, I, I, just, I just assume – Georgia recruits the best players in the country. I just assume there's going to be another Brock Bowers or Lad McConkey or Rara Thomas, or the guys they've lost. How are you looking for some playmakers uh, out there? Who are, who are they going to be? You got any insight on what Georgia is going to be? I I don't. I mean, they still return a lot of guys. They got uh, Dominic. Uh, was it Love it uh, from Missouri a couple of years ago? He had a really good year. And they still like they still just go recruit and go do. I, I agree right. with you. Um, I don't think you can replace uh, Brock Bowers. I think he was a special type of player. I think we'll see that even on Sundays. But I, you got the quarterback. You got the run game. You got the balance of the offensive line that likes to pass and bully people. And who Kirby Smart traditionally is as a head coach filters right down through his players. And they're going to play a type of brand of football. You know what you're going to see out of Georgia. So, yes, I do anticipate a lot of the same things like that. But it's going to look different. I, I, I think Carson Beck, I think this would be an offensive-driven team this year. Alabama's kind of going through that phase under Nick Saban at times where the offense kind of led the bus, where traditionally we're used to Georgia being defensively, a uh, defensive-led team. But uh, they got some young guys on defense, and I don't know how great they will be up front. I don't think you just continue to just rack up the guys up front. I think Georgia may take a step back defensively as far as up front is concerned. 
But I, I don't think you feel any any loss because the offense will be that much more explosive this year. Roman Harper for a few more moments presented by MyBookie.ag. Code next round to double that sign-on bonus at MyBookie.ag. Code next round. Um, you've talked about how different Alabama secondary will look under Kane Womack versus what you saw under Nick Saban defenses. Uh, you've seen T.J. Finley. Is he good enough to stress anything that's different about this defense? Like, will you know anything coming out of this game? I mean, it's, it's yet to be determined. Uh, if, if he does put stress on them, then I'm, then I might stress a little bit. But <laughs> um, I, I still, I, like I said about Georgia, I think Alabama's offense is going to look tremendously. I think they're going to look more explosive. So that's what I'm anticipating. I'm anticipating more explosive offense. And defensively, I just want to know who they're going to be and start to see some type of identity form. We'll see. Um, Alabama should win this game, and they should win it handedly. But it's still, for me, interesting because the defense is going to look so differently. I want to see some of the third down calls. I want to see the personality in Kane Womack because that's what I do not know. I saw what he called at Indiana when he was the play caller a couple years ago. But, you know, I want to see that part of it. For me, that would be what I'll be looking at. And next week, you'll get a really good answer out of me because I'm going to tell you some things. Okay. Um, I'm assuming that is a custom piece you're wearing. It looks like a little Van Gogh meets Hunter S. Thompson. <laughs> I, that's where I was going, LT. I was going to ask him if, if, that, if that's from the John Dutton collection at Yellowstone. Did he wear I that? I mean, you, you got like uh, uh, oh, oh, my shirt. some patterns. It's, uh, it's, you got it's, like it's some, some kind of bro. I actually got it in Grandfather Mountain. Uh, up here in North Carolina, oh. in Grandfather Mountain, played the Grandfather Mountain Country Club. It was, I mean, dude, it's right beside Limbull over there, all that stuff. I mean, a whole bunch of money, a whole bunch of, you know. But I like mountain golfing just because, I mean, it's 15 to 18 degrees cooler, so it's never really that hot. You can wear pants all year long. And then, I mean, the ball travels. But the thing is, you got to land it on the fairway. Like, if it's not on the fairway, you ain't got a chance. Yeah. <laughs> Mountain golf is so superior to beach golf. It's not even close. Oh, not yes. even close. Yes. Love I agree. Golf. Yeah. I agree. Love mountain golf. All right, Harp. Uh, we cannot wait. We have finally made it through the summer, and we're here, and you'll be in Gainesville this weekend. So have fun. We will see you next Thursday. Hey, man. Can't wait, guys. I, I can't wait. I just, college football is here. It's right upon us. I'm glad you guys didn't bring up Florida State, Georgia Tech. And uh, it's just more to come, more upsets, more heartbreaks. I'm very, very excited. We're looking ahead. We're Safe looking ahead. travels, man. See you, Harp. Be careful, buddy. Thanks, fellas. All right. Thank Bye. you, Roman Harper, with us each week on the JohnstonRVCenter.com hotline, courtesy of MyBookie.ag. Code next round when you sign up at MyBookie.ag. Get that sign-on bonus where they double your initial deposit. To start the college football and NFL season here, they double your deposit. MyBookie.ag. That's when you use code next round. Code next round at MyBookie.ag.